Hey guys and welcome back to another episode of Mountain Blade Bannerlord. Today we're going to be doing another guide that's going to be focused mainly around fiefs, so towns, castles and villages. We're going to be looking at how you manage them and um, what you can do to improve them. So we're going to start off with a nice and big one. We're going to go into the towns and just have a quick walkthrough of all the features and everything that you can change, adapt um, for better or worse. So first things first, once you've taken over your first town, whether you're a kingdom or you haven't quite got to that stage yet and you've just decided to take over a town by yourself, um, the first thing you want to have a look at um, is not this, sorry, is actually going to manage town and look at appointing a governor. Now this is the manage settlement tab, so obviously there's quite a lot going on here, let's just walk through it all. So we have our shops and settlement, this tells us what we're producing. Um, and we can use this to help influence our trade if needs be. We know that the ironmonger is producing different types of weapons. Now if we want, we could make this produce weapons for ourselves or produce goods that we can then use to sell off in other places. So we could use this tab to just keep an eye on what's being produced, what we could pick up and sell elsewhere, or just what's um, available and what's not. So we have a free slot there, so we could always use that, open up a shop and um, make even more money from this town. So that's a good little thing to know. Here we have what we're consuming. Now this is a good thing to keep an eye on. It's just what the people in this town are using. So if you ever run out of these things or if, you're, if you notice and you go into the marketplace that one of these is really low and they normally consume a lot of them, it's always a good thing to just go out of your way and try and boost the numbers of that certain item. For example, they consume a lot of grain. So obviously if we see in the market that there's no grain, we should usually head out, grab some more of that and bring it back in. Um, but we don't necessarily have to worry about that. Obviously, the two villages that we have in this place um, are producing fish and grain anyway, so they should handle that. And we're going to get into how these can be affected as well, because although it is automated and those villages will bring in the grain and the fish and the food that these people need, there are certain factors that can stop that and really affect um, the prosperity of your town. Um, but yes. That aside, the first thing you want to do is assign a governor. You preferably want someone who has a high steward or engineering skill. They have more benefits to actually towards the town itself. As we look here, we've got a couple of bad examples. Nobody here's got very high um, skills in a steward or engineering. But as you can see, they each have different factors that contribute towards having um, to contribute towards them being a governor. For example, this guy increases militia recruitment, increases the garrison limit and um, provides one security a day um, along with other little things as well. So he's actually really good, probably better than who we currently have. We can't view his current effects, we'd have to have him down here. Um, sorry, I'm completely wrong, he is there, I just didn't see him. Um, so yeah, we can view his as well. So he, the guy in the middle actually does more, but we didn't really plan on having him as a governor, we had him to help us fight in combat situations, so he's more adapted to being a melee soldier, whereas this guy has just been more kind of, we can throw him away, make him a governor, he helps out a little bit, he increases the tax and the building speed. So um, yeah, we want to do that first, and having a governor means that we can leave this place alone, we don't really have to come back and manage it ourselves, he's going to be fully automated, he'll con queue new constructions for us so we don't have to keep coming back and forward to make sure that everything is going all right. He'll also change the uh, daily defaults, which we'll get into in a minute as well. Um, but yeah, tax, a fairly obvious one. Um, it's just the income that you're going to be getting from the settlement, how much you're going to be taxing your people. It doesn't affect the happiness of the people, and it's not something that you can change at the moment. When you become a kingdom, you can change the levels of tax, but we'll get into that when we do a guide on how to become a kingdom and what changes. Um, the prosperity is usually just yep yeah, consumptions, um, goods from markets, and certain buildings. Again, we'll get into those in a moment. Um, if you have any issues in your villages, solve them as quickly as you possibly can, because it will add to your prosperity. Your prosperity will grow more. And what prosperity does is it increases the amount of people that are living in nearby villages, living in the town, and the happiness of them, essentially. And the higher your prosperity, the more likely the higher your tax will be, and the more that your towns and villages will grow. Now, the more they grow, the more people they have, the more tax gets paid. Quite similar. It just means you're going to be getting more money at the end of the day. 
Um, construction construction can be affected by your governor and by buildings, as well as you can see their prosperity. So that's another thing that your prosperity increases. Now construction is pretty major. Um, in this case, most of our things are maxed out at level three already, so we're not too worried about construction. Um, but if all of these, if we've got a really bad town to start with, then we'd need a lot of construction to start building up all of these buildings. Um, but yeah, we can also put money in this reserve fund and what that will do is add 50 construction and it'll cost 500 a day. So if we put 5,000, we've got it for 10 days um, and yeah, it will just keep adding 50 for those 10 days. So it's not bad, not bad at all. Really, really good little thing there. Um, what else we've got? We've got loyalty, which can be affected by security and um, also your culture. You want to take over initially towns of the same culture as your character and you will give a better loyalty bonus to that town. Whereas if we attack somebody of a different culture, took over their town, we'd have negative loyalty because we're the foreigners and they don't want us there. And the more our loyalty drops, if it gets to zero, you're actually at a chance of having a rebellion. And yeah, the rebellion will just take over your town outright and become its own faction if your, if your loyalty gets too low and you don't have a good enough garrison to defend the town. Um, but other things that we can do to affect the loyalty and make sure it's keep going up is again with different buildings, which we'll get into in a second. Um, but yeah, keep your security high, walk through that in a moment. Um, buildings and just general events usually change loyalty as well. Security is a pretty big one. Security will affect, um, so if you've got prisoners, for example, if you've captured lords and put them in your prison, security will basically affect how long they stay there for. If you've got low security, they'll go really quickly. If you've got maxed out security, they will stay there for a very long time and not be able to escape, which is brilliant if you're trying to take on different towns and you keep getting harassed by constant parties. So you could just store them here and they won't leave if you've got high security. Um, it also affects your militia recruitment. So the higher your security, the more um, militia you'll recruit. And I think it also will affect loyalty and prosperity as well. So it's always a good idea to have as high security as you can. And um, very low security also will help the rebels. If you have low loyalty, it will help a rebellion take over your town. Um, yeah, you can increase your security by just doing issues from the like, nearby notables in the town, in the actual town itself. So all the little um, tannery owners and things like that. If you speak to them, if they've got a little blue exclamation mark, just complete their issues and then your security will start going up as well. Um, and the same is said for the villages, so they'll also affect the security of your town. Uh, as you can see here, we've got minus 2.7 from our garrison. That's purely because we don't have a garrison in this town. I haven't appointed one in there. So as you can see, that's having a massive negative effect on our security. If we did station a decent enough garrison here, then it would be going up a lot quicker, which is very good for the town. And um, yeah, last little thing up here is the militia. So... Yeah, we've got Militia Grounds, which are the building, which is adding one and a half a day. We've got Prosperity, which is adding two a day. The base recruitment, which is just normally, it will change depending on which town you're in. In this case, it's two. Retired, I'm not entirely sure how that affects it. I think that's just um, a common feature. Maybe it's dependent on how many people you have or just how long the game's been going on. That might increase and decrease as is. I think that's just dependent on the game you have. And of course, the governor as well. As security increases, so will militia recruitment. It's not coming up on there yet, but it will later on once the security is a little bit higher. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this section up here. There's not a lot else we can run through. So now we can head through the buildings. Um, fortifications, nice and simple. Uh, they are your walls, and they just mean that you can have a larger garrison within your settlement. So fortifications mean that you can increase how many men you station here of your own men. So militia and garrison are very different. Militia will go up over time itself. Garrison you have to contribute to, so you have to put your own forces into a garrison. And increasing your fortifications just means you can place more men there, as needs be. Your training fields will, so you, you don't have to worry about putting your men into a garrison and then them not leveling up. If you've got good training fields and then you've got a governor with good, um, good stewardship and leadership abilities, they will still get experience, they will still level them up. So you could put recruits in there, come back later on, take them out, and they would all be ready for upgrades. So yeah, the more you um, increase your training fields, the more your men will improve their levels statically. So you can just leave them alone and they'll increase. 
Um, fairgrounds is to your settlement morale. Now, I think the fairgrounds also improve, what is it, loyalty? So they make people happy, make them more loyal, and it also means that during combat situations, your troops will have more morale as well. Um, but it does, it mainly just affects loyalty and probably prosperity to some extent. Um, militia grounds, fairly simple again, they just increase how many, uh, how much militia you recruit per day. So you kind of, you want to upgrade that, maybe not too much to begin with, it will just help you increase your defense of the town. Uh, you want a high militia, ideally, or if you haven't got a garrison in it, you want that going up as quick as possible. It just reduces the chances of your settlement being attacked. Um, siege workshops, really, really, really useful. So if you've besieged the town, you've destroyed its walls in order to take it, um, then those walls are going to need repairing. And the same said, if somebody attacks you or damages your walls in any sense, you want a siege workshop to be able to repair those walls a lot quicker. Because without a wall, you are pretty helpless. You're pretty dead in the water. The enemy can just charge straight through and um, start attacking your settlement from the inside, which is the last thing you want. You want as many defences as possible, especially if you're going to be outnumbered. And in most cases, the enemy's only going to attack when they massively outnumber you. But they will usually try and destroy your walls. So you do want a good level of siege workshops. Garrison Barracks is just another one that adds to the garrison capacity, just very much like the uh, fortifications, so not too much of a worry. All, yeah, all it will do is add to the garrison um, capacity. Uh, marketplace, again, very simple. If we upgraded that, we'd be getting more taxes. So we'd be getting, as you can see there, level 1's 5% bonus to tax, and that will gradually increase maybe 10, 15, 20%. So if we want more income from this settlement, then we will increase the marketplace and get more tax. Aqueduct, again, is a pretty brilliant one. That just uh, increases your prosperity. So it's probably one you want to look at doing first. The higher your prosperity, the more that your gradual um, tax will increase anyway. Your loyalty, militia happiness, everything is affected by prosperity. It is the main key one that you want to improve. Um, your forum is to do with your owner's influence. Now that comes in more when you are a kingdom and you need influence to make changes. Now that's something I'll walk in in the guide when we look at how to become a kingdom and what you can do as a kingdom. So we'll come back to forum when we're doing that and I'll explain that one a lot better later on. Uh, food reserve limit, so you're going to have a food reserve. If an enemy sieges you, your food, you will have no income of food, so your villagers will stop bringing food to your town. So you, whatever you have, that's how long you will last for with food. So if you've got a massive garrison, a massive amount of militia, your food's gonna go down really quickly. So you wanna improve your granary so that you can hold as much food as possible. So when the day comes that somebody is stupid enough to besiege your city, you can withstand a lot longer without losing men to fatigue or um, starvation, as well as suffering morale losses. So yeah, you'll be able to hold on a lot longer. It's quite a good one to hold, especially if you're in the early stages of having a town and you know that somebody might potentially siege you it's a very good thing to build. Um, orchards just improves food production in all your nearby villages. Um, as you can see there, it even says veg fruit trees and vegetable gardens outside the walls provide food as long as there is no siege. So yeah, that one just improves your food production in nearby villages. And um, I don't think it does anything within the town itself. I think it all, all the food comes from the villages. Maybe even the marketplace might affect that a little bit. And your workshops just increases your construction. So again, a really good one to build up first, I'd say. Um, it just means that everything else that you queue to build, you're going to build that a little bit quicker, as well as if we added money to the reserve, we'd build things very, very quickly. Um, it also contributes towards repairing walls and also building siege engines. The higher your construction, the quicker you'll build your defensive siege engines. So that's a massive, massive bonus as well. So we want to get those uh, workshops up. And then we have our daily defaults. So we have four options that usually do very different things. First is prosperity, um, militia, loyalty, and growth. So once you click one of these, you can only pick one and it will just keep going on forever. Uh, they will gradually change that as your pr prosperity increases, so will the effect this is having. So at the moment it's 0.2. Um, and as we go on, as this village progresses, that will start moving up to 0.4, 0.8, then 1, then maybe 2, and then it will just keep increasing as the town progresses and increases itself. So it's just a little bonus. You can only have the one, but whatever we need more. So if we really needed more militia, we'd go train militia. If our loyalty is looking bad, we'll just increase our loyalty a little bit. And if we want our villages to grow more, then we'll pick irrigation so that our villages can grow more. 
Um, as you can see here, we can also we don't have to just build one thing at a time. We can queue them up. So if you wanted, you could queue every single thing here, or as many as you possibly can, to fill in that little bar, so that you know you don't have to come back to this place for a long time, and it's just going to take care of itself completely. So yeah, we can go ahead and we can just queue them by pressing the uh, little plus sign there. So we can just queue whatever we want whenever we need to. Um, but that's pretty much it for the managed settlement in the towns. Um, there's a, only a few little things you can do. Otherwise, you can if you head into the keep, you can see your governor that you've assigned here and anyone else that's stationed within the settlement. So if you've got any parties or lords, they might be stationed in here. Now you have your dungeon. You can head to the dungeon to manage prisoners. You can put all of your prisoners in here, however you do need to be mindful you can't sell them from this page, at least not yet in the game, and you can't recruit them from this page. So once they are in here, if you've got good security that is, they will stay here indefinitely. Um, which is not so good for the normal prisoners, but very very good for your, if you're your lords and your party leaders. If you put them in there with high security, they will stay there for a very long time without escaping. They usually have to be bought. Um, so that's it for the prisoners, and then you have your managed garrison. This is just where you put in your men for your garrison. As you can see, we've only got 19, that is why. Um, I can't remember which one it was, I think it was security, that's why it was so low. We were losing minus 2.7. So we could go ahead and put our whole army in here, recruit a new army if we wanted to. Um, and then we have the last little bit here, which is stash. And this is just where you can put your personal items if you wanted to. Uh, don't think they have much of an effect on the rest of the village. I think if you put food and things in here, it might contribute to your overall um, like granary, so your food storage. It might affect that a little bit, but ultimately this is just a place where you can store all of your stuff. So if you've got some really high quality stuff that you don't want to lose or sell, you could hide it in here until, say, if you have, don't have the level you need to wear it or use it, like a good horse that you really don't want to lose, you could just stash it in here and it will keep it safe for you. That's all you can really do with that. Ultimately, there's going to be loads more things coming out for the towns and castles that you can change and do yourself. But for the moment, um, this is it. This is all you can really do. Uh, but yeah, it is our thief. Everything is going to be coming to us. And obviously, we have the little quick bar up here. So we don't have to go into Managed Town. We can just check um, our security, food, garrison, loyalty, everything we want up here. We can even check what level our walls are. And to get high level walls, you just increase your fortifications. It will come up differently in a castle, which we'll go and show you now. So we're going to go ahead and leave this settlement. And we'll head down here. Um, so another major thing to take into account. If you haven't done the Narex's Folly questline, you won't be a kingdom. It's not as simple as just taking over a town or a castle. That doesn't instantly make you a kingdom. You have to go out your way to do the quest. But I'm going to do a guide on that. It's really easy to do. It's probably something you should do pretty much straight away when you begin your character. Just go talk to all the lords, get that quest out of the way, and then you are free to become a kingdom whenever you want during the game. It's really simple. I know some people put it off because they think, oh, I've got to talk to all these people, um, but it is actually really quick, and I'll show you a really quick way of doing it. Um, but yeah, as we arrive into the castle, as you can see, the layout's a little bit different, but we have the very same options. We can go to Lord's Hall, um, we can go to the dungeon, manage our prisoners here, can manage our garrison so we don't have to click on anything it does just come up straight away here and we can go into manage our castle as you can see we don't have a governor here um, our construction is very low our prosperity is very low compared to the town and we have two bound villages it does say shops and settlement and that is something that's supposed to be removed that is just a bug they did say they removed it in the last patch but apparently not so that shouldn't appear there don't worry about that guys that is nothing that should be gone soon hopefully um, so yeah, just ignore that when you can. Obviously we don't have our consumptions here because we're not a town. We don't have people living in the castle as much. We just have a militia, which we have a huge militia of. Um, our loyalty is unchanging. Obviously you can see everything is exactly the same here. We even have the same reserve, but obviously it adds different levels of construction. So this is only plus 20. Um, yeah, fortifications. So we've got level 3 walls. This is what I was talking about in the, um, the town as well. It is your level of wall, guys. It is the exact, exact same thing. Although it says 100% bonus to garrison capacity, it is the same level as your wall. So whatever level your fortification or wall is, either in a town or castle, that is your level of your wall. Um, as well as giving you a little bonus to your garrison. Um, but yeah, pretty much the same buildings. There's a couple less. 
um, so we can't affect everything as much but we have the gardens for food production Castellan office reduces garrison wages because it's a castle that you're probably going to have a much larger garrison here um, than in a town you probably have more militia in a town so that just reduces your garrison wages we have settlement morale which is exactly the same as in the town um, militia grounds toll collector just slightly different thing but it does the taxes uh, training field exactly the same thing just trains your garrison troops and then you have your workshops and siege and um, workshops as well and we have the exact same daily defaults the only difference with the castle is obviously that it's going to improve a lot slower it's not going to bring as much income its tax prosperity construction are going to be a lot lower um, militia is purely dependent on your prosperity and how well everything is going um, but yeah the same thing your crown villages work exactly the same as with a town um, and the last thing we'll talk about on the feast so there's nothing you can do for villages at the moment anyway so you can't manage villages you can't build anything that that is just as it is you can't change anything there they are they are as they come you can't change anything but what you need to do massively which is massively important um, is one make sure you clear as many issues as you can in your villages and towns because that will help your prosperity security and loyalty massively or massively bonus from it so whenever you can use your opportunities while you're building something maybe or you're not at war with anyone just go and solve issues another thing um, probably the last thing we'll talk about here before we clear up is take out all of the looter vans I know you think maybe it's just like nine or ten that they're not going to affect you but what they are going to affect is your little bands of villagers which you see all the time running around those villagers guys they are crucial to your towns and your villages they are absolutely crucial um, so your villagers, those little bands, whenever they hit a town or a village, they are selling their goods, they are bringing goods from their village into the town, so food and things to sell, and they're bringing recruits as well. So whenever they hit a village, they're dropping off recruits. Whenever they come into a town, they're dropping off more recruits, as well as all their market goods, like food and all sorts of things. So if you've got little bands of looters marching around, then your villagers aren't going to get where they need to go. They're either going to get attacked or they're just going to keep getting delayed, running back and forward, not getting to their destination, which is going to hugely affect your economy and the loyalty and security of your settlements as well. So really try and protect those villagers as much as you can. And another way is just check the surrounding areas. So if you know there's places where hideouts usually spawn, check them and destroy them because they will cause more bands to spawn. Um, they will start producing loads and loads more of looters, brigands, all sorts. So you really want to take them out as much as you possibly can. Um, usually when we where we are here, we usually get one around here that spawns. We can tell when it has spawned because loads of looters will start flooding the area. Um, so yeah, it, is, it can be just random, but it's just something you need to take into consideration. Just take those bands out whenever you see them, even the little ones. Or just get a um, companion to form a party in the nearby area and he'll protect them for you but just make sure that they get where they need to go it will really help out your fiefs it will really just help out your economy and it just means that you can get recruits when you go into a village because they um yeah your villages are crucial they're pretty much doing everything the same is said for your caravans and um, once you own a town you'll randomly start getting caravans from the notables in it so they'll start coming in and out constantly um the same is said for them they don't need as much protection obviously because they have a force of their own to protect them but it is just always good to make sure they can get to their destination you don't have to, I wouldn't say go as far as following them um, just make sure that your villagers in your own lands your villagers and caravans are safe to pass through like don't go around the whole map killing every looter because you'll be there forever and they'll just keep three spawning so I'm not saying do that but just make sure you clear your lands as much as possible as you can see with mine we only encountered that one band who was right down the end there so we probably should have cleared him, but just for the sake of this video, we're not going to bother. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I'm sorry if it's gone a bit too long, uh, but I'm just trying to clear up all the key points with owning any fiefs. Um, I really hope this has helped you guys. But yeah, just remember those key little points. Protect the villages. Make sure you get a governor with good, um, what is it, good steward and engineering skills, as well as other things like charm. Um, because your governors will increase your relations with the notables in the town. As you can see throughout this village, throughout this um, video, sorry, it's been coming up with my relations to be going up plus one with um, a random name. That person is a notable in a town. 
and that's because my governor is constantly talking to them and um, helping them out and it just means if I had a higher charm with that governor I'd get more relation points with those notables which helps just a little bit it just means when I go in there I can get more recruits better quality recruits and um, all other sorts of things like that so it's just a lot of things to consider loads of little abilities you might not think of that actually do affect your towns so all the different skill trees will affect in some way um, your governors and how the benefits they bring to owning a settlement um, your your sibling your first sibling usually is quite a good one he usually has he or she usually has some really good abilities to bring to the table initially so that's quite a good one to um, if you haven't really got a good idea of who to get um, your first sibling is usually a very good choice they usually have a good base of um, bonuses to add to the settlement I can't show you my one in this one because I don't have him available at the moment um, but yeah no, I hope this is up guys I will I'm gonna do a video next probably on starting up a kingdom and all the effects that change your fiefs in that as well because there are loads of different things including culture um, your taxes and all your different sort of abilities all your uh, like bills that you can enforce that will change how your kingdom runs and works um, but yeah uh, yeah just a key thing to set up you don't start a kingdom just by taking over a town you do have to complete the Noretz's folly quest line and I will go through that as well in the next one but no I really hope this has helped guys if you've got any suggestions questions tips or tricks anything that you want to get at me um, get down in the comments below make sure you just fill up those comments be active as much as possible I really appreciate it and hit me with your questions and suggestions guys I really appreciate it it'll really help me out um, but yeah I hope this has helped I hope this has explained a lot for you guys uh, if you need to see any more guides on anything specific let me know uh, if you need help with you know you can't quite take over your first town or you're not entirely sure on how to do that or how to get a castle um, let me know and I'll walk you through that as well but I really appreciate you guys for watching make sure you subscribe and hit the notification button it really helps me out and you can just keep up to date with everything that's going to be coming out and all the how to guides because I've got loads queued up to come out with all different types to help you guys out as much as possible um, but yeah, yeah otherwise guys really appreciate you for watching I hope you've enjoyed it I'll see you in the next one goodbye